is Jordan Hare Stadium in Auburn, Alabama. It is a perfect night for a college football game. Almost 90,000 rabid fans, two top 10 teams, and a rivalry where the winner usually captures the SEC West. It's the first game of the year in the Southeastern Conference. Number six, LSU, and number 10, Auburn in the Tiger Bowl. It's great to have you with us. This series has inspired some tremendous games, usually dominated by brilliant defense and wicked hitting. In fact, the players from both teams will tell you this is the most physical game that they play all year long. We know, Mike, the SEC as a conference is built on great defense. I mean, right now as a league, they're leading the nation in scoring defense. Total yards allowed and yards per play. And the two teams on display tonight, LSU and Auburn, are two of the very best. Two defenses built on speed at all three levels of the defense, and they both have a reputation for being hard-nosed, physical-type defenses that really pound you during the course of the game. If you're watching this game with your kids tonight, hold their hands tight, because we're going to have a battle. <laughs> There's an old saying in college football, if you have two quarterbacks, you really don't even have one. Before the kickoff, a chance to check in with Holly Rowe. Holly. Well, my punch has been made about how these inexperienced quarterbacks will react on the road. So I thought it was curious when before the game I saw their offensive coordinator Gary Croton out on the field by himself, a solitary figure with his play calling sheets in hand talking to himself. I went and asked him what he was doing and he said, you know, I'm visualizing the calls that I will make. He stood on each hash mark, visualized what plays would work for each area. Thanks very much, and that's a technique that works in a lot of venues. We'll see how well it works in football, especially for a yeah. guy who's calling the plays and not running. Well, you, you think Gary Croton might be a calm voice for those quarterbacks, but the question is, if they're talking to him, will they be able to hear what he says? Because it's going to be loud here. Trendon Holiday, a guy they want to kick away from, number eight is back with Keelan Williams. So expect the ball to go to the near side. And the worry part of Trenton Holiday. Williams at the 11. 30. And out of bounds around the 33. Sophomore Andrew Hatch gets the start for LSU. He'll share time with Jarrett Lee tonight. Hatch started his career at BYU, transferred to Harvard, but never played there. And now quarterbacks the number six team in the country. Pretty good story. Yep. He's a pretty calm guy, you know. Now, he's not a, a big, strong arm guy. In fact, watching warm-ups, I thought that Jarrett Lee had a much better arm. But he's a good game manager. And he's mobile. Yeah, he is, and he's a pretty physical runner. He's averaging 6.1 yards a carry. And these two defenses have had tremendous starts this year. The Auburn defense has not given up a point in the first half. Auburn was offside on the kickoff, so they move LSU five yards ahead. Scott off right tackle and Charles Scott who is the leading rusher in the Southeastern Conference 131 yards a game 
you can check out both starting lineups at the top of your screen. When you have new quarterbacks or young, inexperienced quarterbacks, the best thing that you can do for them is have some success running the football. LSU, a very powerful running football team, and that just helps a quarterback like Andrew Hatch to get comfortable in the game. Empty backfield. Richard Murphy, who checked in as a running back, goes into the slot. And you've got four wideouts. And Hatch to throw to the sideline and completes it to Demetrius Bird. And Bird is driven back and dumped. <laughs> I think we've seen already that we talked about how physical these two teams are. First passing situation, Auburn says we're blitzing. Watch the hit on Hatch right on the inside. Mike Blanc hits him. And then Demetrius Bird on the other end after the catch takes a hit. We will see both these defenses attack the new quarterbacks and make them prove themselves on a big stage tonight. You better have the big boy pads tonight. Mm. And a tight chin strap. Scott has to dance to the outside. Nothing there. He'll lose two. There's the Auburn defensive lineup under new coordinator Paul Rhodes. The last six minutes a week ago, Mississippi State had it three times on their side of the 50, and three times they held them scoreless in a 3-2 game. Paul Rhodes, the new defensive coordinator, was at Pittsburgh last season. Done a great job with this bunch. Hatch. Four-man rush tries to run, and down he goes. Send Derek Marks. If you don't know about him, write down the name, because you're going to be seeing him playing on Sundays, either next year or the year after. Well, I talked to him after practice on Thursday, because he's bounced around. He's played end, he's played inside. I asked him, do you like playing inside better? And he said, oh, yeah, because I'm closer to the ball, and I can get off the ball quicker. He is very, very quick and disruptive right off the snap. He now has six tackles behind the line of scrimmage this year. This guy who is a big game player. I would expect a screen or something safe here for Andrew Hatch with this field position. Four wideouts, three-man rush. They drop eight in the cover. Hatch has nowhere to go. Got away from Cinderic Marks. Had a man and overthrew him. Terrence Tolliver had a couple of strides, but Hatch was under pressure. He was under pressure, and he didn't get the completion, but what I liked about Andrew Hatch there was he did not panic. He got flushed out of the pocket, he kept his vision downfield, and the ball just took off on him a little bit, but it was a nice adjustment when the protection broke down, just didn't get the payoff. Josh Jasper is on to punt, and Robert Dunn, who was averaging 21-4 a return early in this season, a young man who now takes what he can get on punt returns instead of trying to get 80 yarders on every one messing it up. Low line drive kick returnable if he can get to it, but he can't. And look at this. Yep. Down to the one. I think Dunn was surprised a little bit. LSU, directional kick. We talked about Auburn wanting to kick away from Holiday. LSU showing that they wanted to kick away from Dunn. And Dunn was a little out of position to field that kick. It was kicked to the right sideline, and he wasn't able to get over to field it. He does the right thing pulling away, but LSU with the directional kick to the right sideline executes it perfectly. Brandon LaFell downs it inside the one, a 52-yard kick. Jasper was very fortunate. It was a low kick. He got the perfect roll. And now Auburn will start in the shadow of its own goal. Play action, flanker, screen, what a call! <laughs> Holy cow, Montez Billings makes the catch from Chris Todd. How much guts does it take to make that call? A gutsy call by Tony Franklin, but the, the thing is they traded, they changed up on LSU because they went under the center with the quarterback for the first play this year and still threw the football. LSU was thinking run all the way, and Chris Todd got some breathing room out to the 10. Gain of nine, holy cow. 
Todd gives it off to Brad Lester, who's coming off of a neck injury. He took an evil hit last week, and Kirsten Pittman came over to make the stop. And, you know, that's a situation where, as this game goes on, Chris Todd has to be a run threat in this offense. When you run a play like that and the backside end chases it down and makes the play, the quarterback has to pull that one occasionally and run it. Right now, I wonder if LSU even respects him running the football. Third and two, Todd is in the shotgun. That's why Cody Burns should see some action tonight because Todd, with 11 carries, has lost 32 yards so far. He is not much of a threat. Cody Burns is, but Todd is a more accomplished passer. And he comes out throwing, he's got the first down. Perfect strike to Rodriguez Smith. He leads the club now with nine catches this year. Danny McRae on the tackle. Nice throw by Chris Todd. He got the big play on first down to get out of the end zone. And now steps right into this throw to the sideline. He's had arm problems. He had a shoulder injury in junior college last year. He was off for about five months. He's healthy now, but not 100% in terms of arm strength. Rod Smith now in the top 10 all time as far as receiving in Auburn history. That time it was a keeper and Tyson Jackson was right there to get top. He didn't gain anything. In fact, he lost a yard. But I still think it's important for him to show the LSU defense that if the read dictates that he keeps the ball, he will keep the football. In order for this offense that Tony Franklin has to be ultimately effective, the quarterback has to be a running threat as well as a passer. Chris Todd started his career at Texas Tech. The big rush throws complete to Billings and Montez Billings out to the 24. And boy, Todd just hung in there. He knew he was going to get drilled. Let's go to Holly. Well, guys, some changes for the Auburn offense tonight. Their offensive coordinator, Tony Franklin, has been on, down on the sideline the first three games. But tonight, he is up in the press box. He also said this week that he is going to go less off of a script this week. He wants to get back to calling plays by instinct. He feels like that's his biggest strength. All right, thanks, Holly. Sometimes instinct is the best thing. Hand off to Ben Tate, and Tate stopped about a yard shy of a first down. Well, if you don't like to hit or be oh, hit, you're not supposed to be out there tonight. Well, both of these coaches are gamblers when it comes to fourth down, but I don't think you can afford, and Tommy Tuberville is going to punt the football. You've got to punt the football here. Your offense did their job as far as getting it out from the one-yard line and give their defense a little rest. Well, this is going to be a game dictated by defense and punctuated by the special teams in the kicking game. And punting in a situation like this or a game like this is not a bad thing. Trendon Holiday, unless you're kicking to him, leads the NCAA. He has had three returns for touchdowns this year. Ryan Shoemaker, who had lost his job as the punter, punts in place of Clinton Durst on this one. Does not get off a good kick. Only 39 yards off the side of his foot. 8-21 go first quarter. Nothing, nothing. Here's the series history between these two ball clubs. LSU with a slight lead as we go to the 43rd meeting. The last four meetings have been very close. The home team has won the last eight. And the winner, as we told you earlier, in six of the last eight, has won the West and gone on to play in the SEC championship game. Play action fake to Scott, the keeper by Hatch. He dives across the 40 to the 43. Blackman made the tackle. Well, when I looked at this game, I mean, and, and some games kind of jump out at you as what's important, what's the keys. I think the first key for both teams, who wins first downs? Who gets positive yardage on first down and set up third and manageable? Who wins the turnover battle? It's been killing Auburn, even though they've won. Punt and kick coverage, very important. And a race to 100 yards, which team runs the football and gets 100 yards or over to be in the best shape to win. Scott is the remaining setback. Hatch again under pressure. And down he goes. And the tackles on this team are wicked players. Tiz Doolittle and Sinderic Marks came through. 
Doolittle, in his sixth year of eligibility, tore up an Achilles last year. Well, he's working against an excellent center, and Brett Helms, number 74, the best center in the SEC, and Doolittle just ran right through him. Now, the, the problem with Helms, and Holly and I noticed this on the field, he's listed as 6'3", 278, but he looked at like he was about 258. He's not a very big center, and Doolittle, at 290, ran right through him on that run. Auburn's got some big dudes in there. Hatch over the middle. Bird with the catch. Just shy, I believe, of a first down. Zach Etheridge unloaded on him. And the thing about these two teams, and not that there aren't physical teams, you know, in the in the rest of the SEC, but they've got guys that will hit you at all three levels. I mean, you know, defensive linemen that hit, linebackers that fly around and hit, and defensive backs that fly around and hit. <laughs> they love the contact, both of these football teams. Tell you what, if I'm a wide receiver and I hear that pattern going over the middle, I don't think so. <laughs> they will kick it away on fourth and less than a yard. Dunn is deep. Got a timeout on the field after a 43-yard punt. Still scoreless, first quarter. What a great night for college football here. Couldn't shove anybody else in here. Almost 88,000. Good protection up in the air for grabs incomplete. Tipped away by McCray. It was intended for Tommy Trott, who used to be the tight end, but there's really not a tight end in the system anymore. And they want to get the ball to him more. The problem, Chris Todd has seized Tommy Trott the whole way, but never sees McCray coming from the other side of the formation. His eyes were locked on Tommy Trott, and he never saw McCray, and very lucky that one didn't get picked. Todd under pressure as he throws and incomplete. And there is a flag down back at the 14-yard line. It looked like LSU may have been offside. I thought it was funny when the offense coordinator, Tony Franklin, said, I've been stupid not to get the ball to Tommy Trott. I'm trying to be more unstupid. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's, he's, he runs good routes. He's got good hands. And uh, he's just a guy they haven't gotten involved in the offense enough. Only three catches coming into tonight. Offside on the nose guard. The defense, penalty five yards. Now main Hey, if you're Chris Todd, are you standing back here and counting the seconds <laughs> until you get some better protection? No, you're not. You're hoping your impact players step up. Ben Tate, the running back. Robert Dunn is a guy they got to get the ball to. And the guy we just mentioned, Tommy Trott. Those two guys, Dunn and Trott, are two guys that they have to get the ball in their hands because they can make some things happen. Todd's had some free runners come right at him. And these are big, fast free runners. Here they come again. Throws too high. As a quarterback, you can't throw that way, can you? Well, you have to. I mean, because what LSU is doing is when they see empty backfield, they're going to bring pressure, and they're going to bring one more than you can block. So Auburn's doing the right thing. They're blocking all the inside guys, but they're turning one guy loose. Unfortunately for Chris Todd, that one guy is Tyson Jackson, who's a big man coming off the edge, and he affected that throw. Third and five. This time Lester stays in. Number one. And they go three wides to the near side. Pressure coming again. Incomplete intended for Trot. Had his hands on it, but couldn't hold it. Good defense by Perry Riley, the weak side linebacker. Let's check in with Holly. Guys, I see a big problem right now on offense for Auburn. The fans here should know better. When their offense is on the field, they're still yelling. It is still so loud down here. Two of those last plays during that series, you could see the struggle. The offensive line, everybody looks up, looks to the sideline for the signal. Then the center has to communicate it. Guys, they're struggling. It's too loud down here. The fans have got to get better. But we'll explain that, why that is a problem, particularly for this Auburn team, Holly. Good point. Shoemaker is punting, we're told, because Durst 
has been under the weather. That may be interference with a fair catch. I don't see a flag, but I did see a beanbag, meaning the ball was loose. And it's a matter of who came up with it. There was no flag, but the beanbag came out to indicate that the ball was fumbled or muffed. Guy has to have a chance to catch LSU it. LSU ball. And LSU fortunate to get it back. Kick and kick coverage, one of the keys of this game. Kicking it in the right spot and getting your coverage guys down there. There was no interference. No, Trenton Holiday right. just did not handle the punt and very lucky to get it back. It came right back to him. It was a good job by Gerard Powers to back off. Yeah. From this angle, it looked like he interfered, but obviously in the replay, he didn't touch it. Well, you called it in the meeting the other day. You said this would be a battle of field position at least early. Yeah. And right now, LSU's got the better of it. <laughs> Nice hole off the right side, lowers his shoulder and drives into Auburn territory before he is driven back in a swarm of blue jerseys led by Greg Stevens. Well, LSU has some impact players on offense. Charles Scott, who just got that carry, a powerful runner coming into tonight, averaging a ridiculous 11 yards per carry. Brandon LaFell, their leading receiver, had a, a key miscue in this game a year ago that resulted in an interception. Trendon Holiday, we just saw him bobble that punt, but if he gets his hands on the football, he is a dangerous player. Tommy Tuberville told me right before the game he is really concerned about keeping him out of the game. Holiday's a sprinter. Hatch, nice cut by Hatch across the 35 to the 34. He's not terribly fast, but he is shifty. And I think that right there shows me why Andrew Hatch is playing ahead of Jarrett Lee right now, because Jarrett Lee has a stronger arm. The ball shoots out of his hands better than Andrew Hatch, but Andrew Hatch is a pretty strong and secure runner. He secures the football, he moves people around, he knows where the first downs are, and we've seen already on a couple occasions him making a nice play with his legs. Richard Murphy, number 26, is in the backfield. Hatch is such a great scorer, you can't help but root for him. Murphy, nice cut to get to the outside, trying to use his speed. And superb defense by the safety, Mike McNeil, who would not let him turn the corner and made the tackle for a loss. Now that's a mistake by Richard Murphy, thinking he can outrun this Auburn defense. This Auburn defense, extremely fast. And the safety, Mike McNeil, took an excellent angle to the football. If he takes a bad angle, maybe Murphy's able to turn that corner. But he kept great position, leverage to the outside. If anything, he would force Murphy back inside and a big loss of yardage. LSU was huddling right over the ball, and the Auburn de defensive line, led by Sin Derek Marks, was almost in the huddle. He heard everything they said. And then yeah. Marks covers Hatch. Maybe they heard screen because they read screen on that play, and Andrew Hatch had to keep the football. That was unbelievable. <laughs> As Sin Derek Marks is not only a great football player, he's a pretty smart guy. Yeah. He says, if they're going to huddle up in front of me, I'll just lean in and get everything they're telling me. And you're right, he played the screen. And here's the LSU <laughs> huddle, and Sin Derek this. said, I'll, I'll jump in here and listen. And number 45, Antoine Carter is the guy that read the screen and peeled off, and Hatch had to run it. Well, that's a little unfair. Third and 13. Draw, Scott. Down to the 28, and you're in the area right now where you've got several options. You can go for it on fourth. You can try a field goal. Well, you just see both of these coaches, Tommy Tuberville and Les Miles, understand the importance of field position and, and playing towards their strength, which right now is their defense. Colt David on the season, uh, his long field goal, 41 yards, two for two on the season. Hit a school record 26 a year ago. This would be from 46 yards. His career long 53. Wow. 
Well, that's unusual to yeah. see Auburn take a timeout on defense, lining up to stop a field goal. Are Auburn timeout. That's right. We'll be back in a second. Tommy Tuberville's defense has not allowed a point in the first half this year. LSU is lining up to try a 46-yard field goal to break that string. Well, neither one of these teams has given up a touchdown either. I mean, LSU has only given up one field goal in the first half. They've outscored their opponents 58-3. Auburn's outscored theirs 34-0. So, very stingy defense. Dolphrey is the holder. Colt David got it with plenty to spare. And LSU breaks on top 3-0. The last two games that LSU has played here at Jordan-Hare, they've scored one touchdown and two field goals. They got beat both times, 7-3 and 10-9. You don't think this first three points on the board is important? Les Miles will take it for sure. Hey, you remember last year? Let's take you back to our All-State Good Hands flashback. October 20th, 2007, we were in Baton Rouge. It was 11 months ago today. LSU down by one. Nine seconds left, and Matt Flynn goes back to throw when a field goal would have won it. 22-yard touchdown pass to Demetrius Bird. That great catch, our good hands flashback. The final score was LSU 30 to 24. The fly in the ointment. Les Miles looks up and sees the clock on one second. Yeah. Could have been a disaster. Well, you mentioned nine seconds. The point also, that was a running clock. The clock was not stopped. It was nine and counting down when they snapped the football, but a beautiful throw by, just a beautiful throw by Ma. Davis are deep. Davis trying to get to the outside, barely got back to the 20 before he was taken down. Nice tackle by Ryan Baker, a linebacker who hustled down on special teams. Let's get back to that point that Holly was making about the cadence and the noise with the home crowd. Very unusual what Tony Franklin has this offense do. He has the center give the cadence rather than the quarterback. And he did that particularly to play on the road so they didn't have to fight crowd noise. So all the linemen look to the sideline and the, and the cadence is also signaled to the center. Now he'll communicate the cadence to the offensive linemen knowing that those five guys can hear him no matter how loud the crowd is. Once the quarterback waves his hand and gives him the signal, then the center takes over and calls the cadence. Todd gives it off. Tate giving you back the line of scrimmage. McCray came up. You don't think the, either one of these defenses are going to make life miserable for people this year? Well, mm. They're both so strong in all three levels of the defense. And the one edge I think LSU has defensively is I think they have more depth at the defensive line. They've got nine or ten guys that they will rotate through that defensive line position and uh, just keep guys fresh for a whole four quarter. And those are guys who can play. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're not just bodies. Todd, better protection this time. Right down the middle. And a perfect strike to Rod Smith. That's what protection will do for a quarterback who is an accurate thrower. It's a gain of 31. A nice little combination route outside. Roderick Smith and Robert Dunn. Little crossing route. And Smith breaks open into the middle of the defense. Good protection, as you mentioned, Mike. And Chris Todd with a nice shot. Ground game just non-existent tomorrow night in what uh, certainly looks like the final game at Yankee Stadium with New York's faltering ways at the end of the season. Underneath an incomplete intended for Montez Billings. We're seeing some differences tonight with this Auburn offense. We already mentioned the one about Tony Franklin being up in the box for the first time this season after the first two games being down the field. And his 
philosophy is up tempo go fast get as many plays in as you can but they're no huddling but they're not going at a real fast tempo they're at the line of scrimmage but they're taking their time being a little bit more methodic here they go with the freeze count and now they look over for a change of the call again tony franklin's upstairs has a better vantage point and a check at the line of scrimmage now by Chris Todd that was communicated from the sideline. 15 seconds to go in the first quarter, and now Tate trying to get back into position as they change the play, and Lee Zimba moved up front. All start, 73 on offense, 55 yards, now remains third. That is Zimba, the tremendously talented left tackle. Let's check in with Holly. Well, guys, as you know, false starts were a huge problem for them last week on the road. They had five against the offensive line. I talked to their offensive line coach, Hugh Nall, just before the game, and he said part of it is a chemistry thing. We have a guy starting just his second game at center, Ryan Pugh, still getting used to the ropes. Well, they have switched, Holly, Pugh and Bosley. Because Pugh was the right tackle, Bosley was the center. It's very unusual to switch those guys. Bosley had a bad shoulder. Some of his snaps were off. Here comes the pressure, and it's incomplete. That should be intentional grounding, and it may also have been a hold, but I don't see a flag for either one of them. I think El Auburn's going to be lucky to just get out of this one with a punt situation. Oh, yeah. Chad Jones, the nickelback, or the dimeback, came off the edge. Again, in passing situations, LSU trying to outnumber Auburn, bring one more rusher than they can block. And it's the outside guy, Chad Jones, that got to the quarterback that time. Shoemaker, all SEC a year ago to kick to Trendon Holiday. Pretty good punt return average, 40.8. <laughs> I'd kick away from him. I'd kick it in the band. Beautiful high punt this time, and Holiday will be forced to make a fair catch. Lost the ball. That's twice now, and both times he got it back. How lucky is Trendon Holiday? An excellent kick that drove Holiday back inside the 10, and then excellent coverage right down there by the Auburn Tigers punt team. Just not able to handle the football. And again, it was Gerard Powers who was right there to make an attempt at the football. The happiest guy in all of Alabama is Trendon Holiday from LSU. He has dodged a bullet twice in the first quarter. End of the period. 3-0. Welcome back to Auburn, LSU, and Auburn, the Tiger Bowl. LSU up by three as we start the second quarter. The winner of this game, six of the last eight years, has gone on to represent the West in the SEC Championship game. No reason to believe it won't happen again this year either. Although Alabama may have something to say. Yeah, they may look pretty good right now. They look good today. LSU trying to get out of a hole and Keelan Williams will wedge out a couple. We talk about field position. When your defenses are as strong as these two teams, we saw in the first quarter, LSU down the punt inside the one, and Auburn able to fight their way out of their own goal line. Still had to punt, but got the, a chance to flip field position. Now, after the mishandled punt by Holiday, Auburn has LSU backed up. Michael Goggins is the player who was down a sophomore out of Alexander City, Alabama. He is a very important player for Auburn because his backup, Gabe McKenzie, has only been a defensive end for a couple of weeks. He was a tight end, and uh, Paul Rhodes told us that Goggins would probably play almost every snap as long as he could handle it. It's good to see him jogging off the field. Yeah, nice sign there. Not only able to put weight on it, but able to trot off. So McKenzie will check in the converted tight end. Still learning to play defense. You'll find backups for either one of these teams are pretty good defensive players. Scott back in at tailback behind Hatch. Scott out of the eye, trying the left side. Takes it up to about the nine. They have to hit the 13 to get a first down. Scott is the first Auburn player in 10 years to start the season with back-to-back 100-yard -back games. I think in this one, he's going to find 100 a little more elusive. 
He's actually, Excuse me, LSU. Yeah. He's actually had a, a little bit of success grinding out some yards, certainly more success than Auburn has had running the football so far in the first half. Third and four, two tight ends in the game for LSU. Johnson is the fullback, option. Quarterback keeper, that'll be close. Depends on the mark, and they are marking it right at the sticks. Again, you see the toughness of, of Andrew Hatch. We've seen him scramble. We've seen him on a design keeper. That was an option where he had a pitch option, but thought he could get the first down himself. He had his fullback, Quinn Johnson, out leading the way to the corner. And another impressive first down coming out of your own Territory. We saw Auburn do it in the first quarter. Now LSU with a new set of downs. In a game like this, field position is critical. And it is a first down. Scott. Boy, a big hard run. I mean, he is a powerful guy. You know, he's listed as 5'11". But uh, his thighs, he is a powerfully built young man. We met with him over at their hotel on Friday night. And uh, you could see it on that run, just churning those legs, low center of gravity. Look at that. He came into the game averaging 11.4 yards per carry, 5.7 against a team that was only giving up an average of 1.8 per rush. Is pretty good. And he blasted through that hole. Picked up eight at second and two. Single setback, still Scott. On the option. And that's that option read, and Hatch read the wrong way. Yeah, that was a that was a miss, a little miss, mix up there by Hatch. I don't know if he hesitated, if he was supposed to give the ball on that one or what, but he who hesitates is lost, especially against a fast defense. And uh, Andrew Hatch ended up taking a loss on this one. If that was a read, he was dyslexic on that one. <laughs> Third and four. LSU has not converted a third down yet in the ball game. And I take that back, the option on this drive. Auburn comes with a blitz. Pass underthrown, incomplete, intended for LaFell. And I'll tell you what, Gerard Powers and this secondary, these guys are all over the receiver. Well, that ball was thrown a little too soft and a little bit too far behind the receiver. There was no safety help over the top. So if Hatch at least throws this in this area, he has a chance. But the ball's a little bit behind and a little slow, and Powers was able to get there underneath it and make the play. Dolphrey is on to punt. LSU trying to do something tricky tonight. They've got Dolphrey and Jasper, both of their punters, wearing the same number, number 30. And they've got three guys out to the left, and that's the way they're going to try to punt it. As both of these return guys getting an awful lot of attention from special teams. A 50-yard kick with the roll. Dolphrey, good job. He's been very inconsistent this year. There's the other 30. That's Josh Jasper. Hey, can you have three of them? Welcome back to Auburn, Alabama. That's Toomer's Drugs at Toomer's Corner where time stands still. They still make handmade lemonade. It's an old-time diner with the stools. Great place just to even walk by and look in the window and see what people are up to. It takes you back to uh, the way they did business in the 50s and has never changed at yeah. Toomer's Drugs. I'll tell you that Toomer's Corner, if Auburn wins tonight, it will have a different look. <laughs> All that toilet paper. Auburn back on offense up to the 33-yard line. Ben Tate gets the carry. He's the power runner for this running game. Brad Lester, when he's in there, he's a little more elusive. That's the first running play that Auburn has used on first down and has actually gained a yard. I mean, they gained two yards on that one. It's the best starting field position for Auburn. I would expect to see Tony Franklin maybe try to air it out a little bit more, particularly if they get another first down on this set of downs. 
Chris Todd with good protection throws underneath and Tate can't hold on. See, I think the best chance for Auburn to throw the football against this LSU defense is going to be on early downs with backs in the backfield where there's a run pass threat. And, and when they wait till third down, and if they go, particularly when they go empty backfield, it just appears to me that LSU and their defensive staff, Doug Mallory calling the defenses from the box, says we can cover their receivers and we're going to pressure this quarterback every time they get in this set. Auburn so far on third down has not done well, and now Todd rolls away from pressure and throws at a receiver wide open, and that's complete to the backup tight end, Tim Hawthorne. A nice change that time by Tony Franklin, anticipating pressure and man-to-man. -man, he rolled his quarterback out, so he didn't set him up in the same spot. Rolled him away from pressure, and then Hawthorne able to beat McCray on the route, single coverage. Danny McCray missed last week with an ankle injury, and he didn't look too good on that play in man coverage. They rolled him away from the blitz, and that's what made that play work because yep. Chad Jones, one of the safeties, was coming off the right-hand side. He's got no chance to get there from there. That was an excellent adjustment by Tony Franklin because I think he was anticipating the same thing. When we go empty backfield, LSU is going to bring pressure, and they're going to bring more than we can block, so let's change up by moving the quarterback away. Big play for Auburn. Just inside the 35-yard line. Tate off the right side. Got a block, turned the corner. Tate to the 20. 5'11", 216-pound junior out of Newark, Maryland. Well, Tommy Trott did a great job. Number five leading this play. Tyrone Green, the left guard, pulled out in front. They secured the corner for Tate. He's not the speed back, but they did a great job of sealing the corner of the LSU defense, and Tate was able to turn the corner. First and 10 at the 19. Tate again, not this time. Picks up one, and Tyson Jackson, a preseason All-American from that left defensive end spot, made the tackle. Jackson thought about going into the draft last year and then decided he really needed to improve his pass rush skills and came back for this season, and they're happy he did. I spoke very highly of, of talking with Les Miles at the end of the season after the championship game and seeking his advice, and between that and his talks with his family, decided to come back. Todd, good protection. That's and that's going to be interference. Well, they called it, it an incomplete. I thought he caught the football. And Tommy Trump with what looked like a sensational catch. It was a heck of an effort. This time they went after Patrick Peterson, a true freshman. And he made the tackle. Tommy Trott not able to make the catch. Good call and a good call in the interference because Patrick Peterson just tackled him before the yeah. football got there. There you see it hit the ground as it bounced off his chest. Another nice throw by Chris Todd. Peterson, a five-star recruit, a parade, and USA Today All-American got lost on that one and decided that committing interference was better than giving up a touchdown. Here's where we're going to see something different from the Auburn offense, possibly as well, and that is Chris Todd going under center. They worked on this in practice this week. Well, Tony Franklin has been a shotgun-only offensive coordinator for the most part when he was at Troy. They're in the shotgun now, but don't be surprised to see him get under to the center as well. Take the setback. He gets the carry. Take to the goal line and stop just short. Coming into tonight's ball game, Auburn is the worst team in the SEC in their red zone offense productivity. They've only scored 69% of the time and only five touchdowns in 13 red zone opportunities. Here they go under the center on the two yard line. A change up for the Auburn offense. They haven't done this in the first three ball games. Eric Smith the up back, Tate is the eye back. Tate. When they announced they were going to 
with a spread offense. The people around the state of Alabama who are Auburn fans just about had a hissy. They run the ball down here, but they are showing those fans they can run out of this formation too. Well, and those cheers are extra loud because they didn't score one of those last week over in Starkville. They won three to two. A huge crowd, almost 88,000, geeked up for this one, the first touchdown of the night. 7-3, Auburn over LSU. I think we're going to see uh, the other LSU quarterback on this possession, Jarrett Lee, getting some last-minute instructions. Gary Croton told us we would see him in the second quarter. And the key thing for him right now is just to play within himself. You know, you're, you're standing on the sideline, you're anxious to get in the game. Don't feel you have to force a play. Play within yourself, within the offense, and kind of get your feet on the ground in this game. Morgan Hall is the kickoff man. He is going to squib it because they had stacked Trendon Holiday and Keelan Williams as the returners and there is no way they're going to let Trendon Holiday get his hands on this football. Oh, and that really works to LSU's advantage because it was cleanly fielded and that gives LSU excellent starting field position for Jarrett Lee's first possession. Kirsten Pittman came up with it and made the most of it. Here is Jarrett Lee. A late starter, didn't play till he was a junior in high school. He is a more polished passer than Andrew Hatch. Well, LSU, mobile. LSU ran seven first down plays so far in the game. Everyone has been a run. Let's see if they throw it on this first down play. Scott. Well, I like this kid. He's tough. You know where he improved last year, from last year to this year, one of the biggest areas he said he improved is his vision and just getting more and more reps and feeling blocks and having patience and seeing where defenders are coming from. That was a great piece of running by Charles Scott, not because of the power, but because of the vision. He picked up nine on that run. He's already carried seven times for 43 yards. Came in as number one in the SEC. He'll get it again behind Johnson. Has the first down. Here's Holly Rowe. Well, Charles Scott was so intent on being a contributor and being the guy this year that he's done all kinds of things to get better. First of all, as you mentioned, Todd, getting better with vision, but he also has been watching a lot of tape of Walter Payton. He thinks Walter Payton was one of the greatest all-time at breaking tackles. Now, Walter, of course, was much slighter than Scott. Scott keeps that powerful frame going, and he's doing pretty good on his own. And the way he's running, this is a perfect time for Gary Croton to call a play-action pass for Jarrett Lee. Fake it to Charles Scott and let Jarrett Lee take a shot down the field. Lee gives it to Scott again. Burst straight up the middle. <laughs> or just let him rip right yeah. through the defense. How about that? That'll work, too. Let's check in with Reese Davis. Reese, the United States has had problems on those Sunday matches. This is Zach Etheridge, real leader in the secondary for them. He was really good last year as a freshman. Now that he understands the game a little bit more, he is expected to have a tremendous sophomore season. He's on his way to the locker room right now. to the locker room. It looked like his right arm that they were, uh, that he was favoring a little bit when he got off the pile. They have found something in that offensive line for Scott. This time he is dragged down in the backfield. Never had a chance. And Antonio Coleman crashed down from his left end spot. This Auburn defense, they've got a couple big tackles, but overall they're not a big defense. They're very fast and they're tough and they hit hard. But this offensive line for LSU, one of the best in the country, an experienced group, some big men up there, and uh, LSU trying to run the football right at Auburn right now. With the four returning starters, and they were good last year. Lee throws it away. Discretion being the better part of Bauer, and he was running for his life. Excellent play by Antonio Coleman, number 52. 
Did a great job of maintaining contain. Even though LSU has been running, 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 he still played his responsibility, which was to take care of the quarterback on any kind of a bootleg. And he forced that throw away by Jarrett Lee. You remember last year, Coleman never got any publicity. He was overshadowed by Quentin Rhodes. But when he played, he played pretty well. Paul Rhodes said he's one of our three best football players on defense. Third and ten. Jarrett Lee goes to the shotgun. Four-man rush, good protection intended for LaFell. He was in the middle of that zone and pretty well blanketed by the coverage. Yeah, I think uh, the underneath route may have had a little more opportunity there for Jarrett Lee. He tried to zip one in. You did see the strength of his arm on that play. The ball really shoots out of his hands, but he threw into a little bit of a crowd on that one. They will send on the field goal team. This will be a 50-yard try for Colt David. He has already hit from 46. Low line drive. Never had a chance. Now he's lucky this one didn't get blocked. That could have been even worse field position for the LSU defense. Because that thing was incredibly low. I mean, this one, as you said, never had a chance. How did that not get blocked? Must have gone between Ooh. him because it didn't go over him. And David's got that little hitch in his approach. Sort of pauses. I don't know if that contributed to it at all. But he's a good kicker. So Chris Todd takes over. We have yet to see Cody Burns as anticipated. Let's take a look at tonight's Half trivia question. What five universities in the FBS, whatever that is, have Tigers as their nickname? Somehow this stumped us at the meeting this morning for a little bit. Yeah, it's not that hard of one. No. We're easily stumped, though. I'll give you the answer shortly. FBS, that one of those banks that failed? Todd with time. Lays it up. Badly overthrown and intercepted. He threw it right into the arms of Chris Hawkins. You know, they've had a couple times where they got good matchups against safeties in coverage, and Chris Todd has made a couple big throws. This time, he thought he had a matchup, but he overthrew Robert Dunn, trying to get his hands on the ball and beautifully played by Chris Hawkins. Now, that's not a safety. That's a corner, and they have different coverage skills ordinarily. At that time, Chris Hawkins read it perfectly and made a play on the football. Jarrett Lee will come back in to run the offense. Still have not thrown the football on first down, but they've had great success the last three first downs, running it with Charles Scott. And Scott again, right back to the well. Stood up by Stevens, got maybe a yard. Ball came loose, but late. Stevens, 6'3", 221 out of Tallahassee, Florida. You always wonder how you, a hometown product like that for a school like Florida State gets away. Red zone alert if you're interested in Georgia, Arizona State. Georgia on the move. One of the few times Georgia has ever gone that far west for a ball game. Trying to maintain their third ranking this week in the country. Lee with time. He overthrows. Intended for Bird. And he was well covered by Gerard Powers. Let's go to Holly. Well, guys, new defensive coordinator for Auburn, Paul Rhodes, is trying to build a culture here. And the culture he's chosen is going to work. He tells his guys that they've got to have these hard hats. They're awarded the hard hats for good defensive effort, and they also get them taken away. The players wore it out here on the field before the game. They want to symbolize that they're going to work every day. They say construction workers, regular folks have to go to work. So do we. And even after the quick change, they're happy to get back out on the field and have their offenses back. Holly, I'm sorry you're not wearing that hat. Look good on you. 
Lee running away from pressure. Throws. Tremendous coverage incomplete. Merrill Johnson knocked it away from the tight end, Richard Dixon. He was all over. Well, again, I, I know they've had success running the football, but I think LSU and Auburn are going to have more success throwing the football on first down when it's a run-pass threat than putting their quarterbacks in third down definite pass situations. These two defenses, two of the best in the country, defending people on third down. In fact, Auburn coming into the game, unbelievable. Teams have only converted three out of 46 attempts on third down coming into the game. It is. Dolphy. Boomer. Then lets this one go. Here go. Boy, the kick, the punters, and the punt coverage tonight so far has been outstanding by both teams. That was 58 yards. Doesn't get much better than that. Welcome back to Auburn. Now the answer to tonight's Aflac. trivia question. What five universities in the FBS have Tigers as their nickname? You've had plenty of time to think about it. Here's the answer. Two of them are playing tonight. Auburn and LSU. Also Clemson, Memphis, and Missouri. If you guess Princeton, Princeton is not a bowl subdivision team. Formerly won a quarterback keeper for Todd. That's the right read. I mean, that, that was the right read by Chris Todd. He was tackled by an outside defender, and that's what he has to do. When they close down on that play, he's got to make that read to keep it. There's Cody Burns, still has not gotten in the ball game. He's, uh, he, he's worked hard to improve himself as a passer, a little bit known more as a runner. But I don't know when we'll see him because other than that interception, I think Chris Todd has played pretty well tonight. He's managed the offense. He's thrown the ball pretty well. And if he can get five yards on a carry like he does here, that's a good read, too. Now, he's not, you can tell, he's not going to go 70 yards on anybody. But if he can pick up five, six, seven yards and make the right read, he can play in this right. offense. Well, see, here's what he's reading. He's got to read this guy. As he fakes the handoff, if he chases the play, the read says to the quarterback, I've got to keep this one and run it. And Kirsten Pittman chases Ben Tate. He's got to run the football. He's got to make LSU respect that he will run it. An excellent job by Chris Todd. There is a marker down, and the officials are discussing it. See, if LSU does not respect him running it, then they can really clamp down on this Auburn running play game. play is over. Personal foul, 85 blue. Personal foul for white. By rule, these all set. Result of the play is a first down. Quindarius Carr is number 85 for Auburn. Number four is Jai Eugene for LSU. Don't like those offsetting yeah. personal foul penalties because somebody started it. It is a first and 10 Auburn. Again, we talked about this difference with the Auburn offense. All the players look to the sideline for the signal. The center not only makes all the line calls, but does the cadence as well. Once he brings his head up, he calls the snap count as well. Tate. Up to about the 28-yard line. You know, everybody around here, we've been in Auburn for a few days. There's so much uh, gnashing of teeth almost about this Auburn offense. Yeah. When they would ever get it together, they only scored three points. But they really have moved the ball okay. Turnovers have been their problem. I mean, they yeah, had eight six, fumbles yeah. in two weeks. Right. I mean, that's uh, it's hard to win. Turnovers and penalties have really, uh, really hurt them. Auburn has been their own worst enemy. They've actually moved the football in the first three games, just hurt themselves with those mistakes. Tate. You know, intelligence is, is an element that is often overlooked. We've said before, Todd's not going to go 70 yards. He's not going to scare you to death running. But if he's smart enough to make those reads and has worked hard enough on his film study and he can run for five yards, you better respect it or he'll kill you. 
Well, and if you run for five yards, that's a win. Because if you get, you know, you get yes, two sir. of them, it's a first down. That's it. Third and two here. This is a very manageable third down situation for Auburn. Third and two. Run pass threat both. Quarterback keeper. Boy, now, I don't know about a quarterback draw as a call, not with him. Well, you're hoping to fool the LSU defense with that one, but Tyson Jackson was not fooled at all. What a great play from his defensive end position. He closed down so quickly and made the play. LSU taking a timeout to preserve some time on the clock. There's 147 to go in the first half. Chad Jones, instead of Holiday, will go deep. Trendon Holiday, as dangerous as he is, has not handled the punts very cleanly tonight. And going with Chad Jones. Hey, you don't want to fumble here. Not with time running out. And Jones will make the secure fair catch. Let's check in with Reese. Boy, didn't Notre Dame look bad on offense. Yikes. Kind of interesting, Jarrett Lee still in. Now he's in a definite pass situation because of a two minute. Touchdown Dave McKenzie. It's going to come back though because it was an illegal substitution by Auburn. They had a man run onto the field late. Oh, what a killer. I think this one's going to come back after the mistake by Jarrett Lee was preceded by a mistake from the Auburn sideline. And Jarrett Lee trying to explain what happened. Illegal shift against LSU. How about that? Yeah. Well, the shift is what got the penalty. The fact that the defender ran on late, he wasn't the 12th guy, so it's not a penalty. He was the 11th guy. He just wasn't on the field. He's allowed to run out there. If he would have been a 12th guy coming out, it would have been a penalty on Auburn. As it was, the touchdown stands. Well, that's remarkable. The point after is good. I did not see the player that was running off the field. McKenzie, the junior who was in there because Goggins is not. Well, watch now. Gabe McKenzie is the guy who ran on the field late. I mean, he's the guy who wasn't on the field. Here he comes, right here. Hey, I'm supposed to be in the game. Not only am I going to get in the game. Wow, what a play. Actually, it was 93 running on late. Mike yeah, Blanc. It was Mike Gabe Blanc. McKenzie got the interception. I thought it was 83 coming off the sideline. Blanc was late. McKenzie, the guy who's only been a defensive end for two weeks, makes the play. So they only had 10 guys on the field, yeah. at least in on the play. It looked like they had 15. And that was an excellent play by McKenzie because he read the screen and he just feathered out. He didn't rush the quarterback. You'd think a guy who hasn't been a defensive end very long wouldn't read that that quickly. There were four other guys within five yards they all read it too that was a tremendous defensive effort on Auburn's part and Lee off the bench 0 for 5 with an interception and now Holiday wants to have a shot on the return but he won't get it LaFell has it instead and he's up to the 36 yard line that's why I was just a little surprised that Jarrett Lee was in on that possession to start with I mean, Andrew Hatch started the game, and he has not gotten to do too much here. And now he comes back out with a minute 24 left in the half, but they're down 14 to 3. And that's to me, is one of the problems with alternating quarterbacks yeah. or playing two guys. You have one guy that's played pretty well, you bring in another guy, he doesn't play well, you're afraid to put him back in, and you really hurt his confidence. Scott. 
Looked like he almost lost the ball. He did not get back to the line of scrimmage on the handoff from Hatch. Well, I wondered how this Auburn defense would do. I mean, we knew coming in their numbers were staggering. But this LSU offense, with their experience and their strength and size up front, was going to be a new challenge. But they have more than held their own. They have been strong inside, and they have been fast to the football. Tenth overall in yardage, only 213 yards a game. Number three in scoring defense. They are only giving up five points a game. Hatch on the option. Keats across the 40, fighting for more yardage. Up near the 45 with the clock running. And the LSU coaches saying, hurry, get up, call time. So they stop the clock with 31 seconds to go in the first half. Well, that last possession was really devastating for LSU. Oh. Not that they can't overcome it. No, but, but it was a killer. Killer to give up a touchdown. Wow. a little bit more as we go along. Can LSU do anything with this in the last 31 seconds? And they'll go with Johnson, the fullback, to get the first down. So far, it has been all hatch as far as quarterback effectiveness so far. Jarrett Lee has not completed a pass except to Auburn, and that led to a touchdown. Scott. And right now, LSU is showing no signs of wanting to do anything except get to the locker room and regroup. Well, Les Miles called a timeout with eight seconds left. But from this position on the field, I, I maybe you got time to make maybe one throw and then try to try a field goal, or you just throw it as far as you can and try to get it to the end zone on a Hail Mary type play. That's about your only option here with eight seconds. So we call certain games a barn burner. Let's take you back to September 21st, 1996. The old Auburn Sports Arena burned to the ground just outside Jordan-Hare Stadium as play continued. Auburn would cut LSU's lead to 17-15 with 38 seconds left. But John Cooley's two-point conversion attempt was picked and returned the other way. They like to name games around here. This one, the night, the barn burned. And that was started by a barbecue group. And that was one of the last times that the visiting team has won in this game. The last eight years, the home team has won this matchup. I bet the food really cooked in a hurry over that baby. And now Tommy Tuberville wants a timeout. You can't take him to the locker room with you, so... We love coming down here. I mean, it, you, you just get the feeling it's only the third week of the year for one of these teams, the fourth week for the other. But these games are so big, so important, even at this time of the year, because as we said earlier, six of the last eight years, yeah. the team that wins this takes the SEC West. Yeah, you know, I really think that this rivalry has surpassed the Florida-Tennessee rivalry in the SEC. It used to be in the early and mid-90s that, that that game, because the East was more dominant than the West, the winner of the Tennessee-Florida game was kind of the team that had the inside leg to get to Atlanta and play for the championship. But now the West is on even par, even footing with the East and this game LSU Auburn has become a huge battle early in the season. Steve Spurrier pretty much took care of that. Second and five they go to the shotgun. 
throw underneath, and that's incomplete. That would have put them at the 39-yard line, which would have given them a chance at, say, a 56-57 yard field goal try. And now your only option is the Hail Mary. Yeah. Or what we had last week, the Hail Jackabouse. That's right. Jump ball, and the rule is knock it down. Don't try to pick it, and Walter McFadden did just that, and they are on their feet at Auburn after a great first half. Holly is with Tommy Tuberville. Coach, you guys wanted to see growth on your offense. How would you assess what they did in the first half? Well, offense moved the ball pretty good. We didn't play very well on first down. They're playing to run. They're forcing us to throw the ball. We're going to take it. We can throw the ball on them. Protection wasn't very good the first quarter, but the second quarter we got a little stronger. How are they forcing you to throw the ball? Well, they're putting eight men on the line of scrimmage. Eight, when you put them out, you can't block them all. So you got, you got to throw. Of course, we want to throw it anyway, so that's kind of falling in our hands. All right, thanks, Doug. Thanks. Thank you, Holly. Our halftime score here at Auburn. And it has been a beauty of the first half here at Auburn, Alabama. Here are the numbers. Auburn, 133 total yards to 105 for LSU. Four yards deep in the end zone. They'll keep it there and take it out to the 20. Here's Holly Rowe. Well, guys, I spoke with LSU coach Les Miles at the half and asked him about having Jarrett Lee in there during that situation. He said, you know, he has done some of our two-minute stuff. We felt like he could handle it, but it was a last-minute thing, and maybe they're rethinking it right now. He said, hey, to improve in their passing, they, they just got to quit throwing it to the other guys. He loves, though, how his defensive front is playing. He said, if we can quit them running the ball, we have a chance. But lastly, Tyson Jackson, the defensive player for LSU, when he just ran out of the locker room, he just kind of slapped me on the arm. He said, hey, this game is just getting started. <laughs> And yeah, that's the way they like to play. I mean, down in the trenches, these two teams really go after each other. Chris Todd rolling left away from pressure, now running for his life. Back to the other side, complete to Billings, and Montez Billings down the sideline. What do you think of Chris Todd so far? Well, you know, his numbers have not been very good. I mean, but he's going against an outstanding defense. But I think he's managed the Auburn offense pretty well. He had the one overthrow that was resulted in an interception. But even that play right there, he shows pretty good poise in staying alive and making a positive game. Doesn't have all of his arm strength back. Now Todd on the option and didn't have a chance on that was buried. He suffered a, a shoulder injury in junior college. He's only about 85%. And he has a much better arm than he has shown tonight as far as strength. He can make all the throws when he's healthy. And he thinks his arm will come back. It, it's it's going to be hard for it to come back during the season. Tony Franklin saw him in high school. He's from Elizabethtown, Kentucky. And has known him ever since his high school days. And ran this offense for three years. Throws off the wrong foot here and a nice toss to Rod Smith who made that catch and has a first down. Todd grew up in Kentucky. Played at Elizabethtown. Started his career at Texas Tech then went to Hutchinson Community College. Enrolled at Auburn. So he is one of those well-traveled guys. We have yet to see Cody Burns who is a better runner, but not as good a passer as Chris Todd. And you just wonder if we will see him. Here's Lester trying to get to the outside. Nice cutback. Ran through an arm tackle. Lester still on his feet. Down to the 46 yard line. Good hard run by Brad Lester out of Lilburn, Georgia. And it looked like Jacob Coutrera, number 54, was going to stop him short of the first down. It was second and one. And Coutrera is right there, has him. And he just can't wrap him up. And a great job of Lester just spinning and keeping his legs moving and turns what looked like maybe a one-yard loss into a big game. 
Contrera is starting at middle linebacker for Derry Beckwith, who is one of their outstanding defensive players. And Contrera is just about the only thing back there. Uh, they would have to switch a lot of guys around if he can't play, and that's Robert Dunn making a catch. And this Auburn offense is fired up yeah. coming out of the locker room. And the best thing that Auburn is doing offensively is moving Chris Todd in the pocket. They're not dropping him straight back because LSU has shown a tendency to want to bring extra pressure. So they're rolling him one side to the other to alleviate some of that pressure defense from LSU's front. Showing a five-man front right now. Quarterback keeper. And again, he's not going to get a lot, but if he gets some, that's all you need, right? And that's what he has to do, because if LSU refuses to respect him as a runner, he has to prove him wrong. Again, here's who we're reading. Fake it to Ben Tate. If this guy closed down, you keep the football. You don't have to be a speed burner. You don't have to be a great runner. You just have to be a good decision maker, and you got to make that decision quickly. First down, Lester off the right side. And they call that the read option, and that is the most popular offense right now in the spread, and it's because the quarterback is literally reading the defense to see where he should go with the ball. And, and you know, coming into tonight's game, Chris Todd had shown no effectiveness running the football. 11 carries for minus 32 yards. Yes. I mean, he was not a threat, and in order for this offense to really be effective, the quarterback must be a running threat. His longest run before tonight was a yard. One, count them. Complete pass to Rod Smith. Got an injury update. What do you have, Ollie? Pick number 91 for LSU, Charles Alexander. Their fierce defensive tackles on the sideline right now. He was injured early in the game. They retaped his left ankle, but just now he's come out complaining of pain in his right knee. It's significant because it's the same knee that he tore the ACL from last year, missed most of the season. Yeah. Guys, they kind of examined him. He looks okay. We'll see if he can go. Yeah, he missed most of 2007 with that injury. And here is Tate giving ground. Not a great idea. And he's going to lose about five. Well, what a There's a mistake. late hit at the sideline. That'll cost him 15 yards. Kelvin Shepard got in a late shot. What a silly mistake. Yeah, because it was great defense. Not After the play's over, personal foul, number 11. It was not a violent late hit, but it was clearly out of bounds. I mean, they did a great job of stringing the play out. Now, just let him go instead of pulling him to the ground. I mean, they're in the white. If he just backs away and lets him go, it's a three- or four-yard loss. Great defense by LSU, but the extra toss at the end drew the flag. So move the ball down to the 19-yard line. Auburn back in scoring territory. Already up 14-3. to And their offense has looked its best in this drive. Better than it had all night long. Lester again. Not this time as the LSU defense swarmed. Led by Kelvin Shepard off that weak side. Oh Auburn coming into tonight averaging 205 yards a game rushing. It'd be very difficult to get to that number against LSU, but you have to run with enough effectiveness to make that defense respect both run and pass. If you ever become one-dimensional against a great defense, you're done. Your night is done. Yeah. And Auburn has run with enough success. And now with Chris Todd pulling it and running it a couple times on the zone read to, to open up some things in their passing game. That's why Tommy Tuberville changed offensive philosophies. He didn't want to be as one-dimensional as he had been before. Todd dumps it off. And that's not going to be much as Lester caught it out of the backfield and Perry Riley was right there. Good news for LSU as they bring in fresh defensive lineman Charles Alexander, one of those guys who's coming back in. So after that report from Holly, it's good to see him back in the football game. They've got nine or ten defensive linemen, and yeah. they're healthy, that they can rotate. And the key to doing that is, is keeping everybody fresh. So when you get into the fourth quarter in a tough football game, you've got fresh bodies and fresh legs in your defensive line. Don't you get the feeling that LSU is going to have to hold Auburn to a field goal here? Absolutely. Absolutely. 
Blitz coming. See, they didn't roll the quarterback out that time. They yep. dropped him straight back, and LSU continued to bring pressure, and that time Chris Todd was like a sitting duck. Tyson Jackson and Perry Riley. See, they bring the pressure inside, and they can only block five. Well, that means somebody's going to come free, and in that case, it's the outside rusher, Tyson Jackson, who gets the sack. And not only do they keep him out of the end zone, they drive him back yeah. out of field goal range. So a tremendous effort by LSU's defense. And Shoemaker will come on to punt. Chad Jones, again, they want his sure hands back there if he has to make a fair catch. Boy, that's a bad punt for all. Oh. They have a chance to pin LSU down. Trendon Holiday's not even in the game. You don't have to worry about directional kicking away from him. Oh. Just let that thing bounce down there. And he shanked it off his foot. Seven yards. That's a mistake. LSU's first possession now of the third quarter. And, uh, They've got to get some balance in their offense, and they have been totally one-dimensional to this point. And on first down in the first half, they ran the ball 13 times and only tried to throw it once. That was the ill-fated interception by Jarrett Lee. Pat straight back to throw. Blitz coming. Got away. Boy, how'd he do that? I don't know, I don't but know. an oh, excellent run. Picked up 12. Yeah. Really a nifty run. I, I thought he was going to get tackled from behind and sacked and set them back for a long second down play, and somehow he escaped the pressure and got a first down. This was a called pass, only their second one of the entire game on first down. You see the pressure inside by Blanc and Senderic Marks, and Hatch very coolly sidesteps and gets a first. Boy, those guys are monsters Ooh. inside, aren't they? Scott, maybe a yard, and Derek Marks is right there to make the tackle. Well, if you want to match up the quarterbacks that LSU has used tonight, we told you they were going to play two. It's no contest. Hatch, 26 plays. At least he's gained 92 yards and three points. But Lee, that big interception was the kill. And Hatch looks ready for this game more than Jarrett Lee. I think Jarrett Lee's got a better arm, but just his eyes, his whole body language, he doesn't look as ready to play this game as Andrew Hatch. Hatch on the keeper, and bang. Gerard Powers just unloaded. Hatch is hurt. I mean, he is wobbly. Oh, look at him. He doesn't even know where he's going right now. Oh, man, what a shot. Hatch is walking to the sidelines. And he's down. I mean, yeah. he is hurt. He was walking away from the huddle, trying to get to the sidelines. I mean, he took a shot. He's Gerard seeing Powers. cobwebs right now, yeah. and that's all. And that means Jared Lee is going to get ready, and Hatch was in obvious distress. Look at him. I mean, he, he is oh. out of it. He's trying to get himself back together. Wow. When you see the eyes go up like that. And so now, this is probably going to become Jared Lee's game. And in that first half, he just did not look like he could do it. But he's going to have to for LSU right now. Again, for I, anybody that's had that happen to him, yeah. it, it's a horrible feeling because there's just nothing else you can do. Yeah. They have no control. See, and now the medical staff will get him over there. there. There is a protocol you go through. You ask a series of questions, examine his eyes, ask him about headaches and everything else. And the rule, it's an unwritten rule, but it's become this way. If you show signs of a concussion, you're done. Yeah. And he's going to say right now he's okay and wants to go back sure here. Sure he will. But I'll be surprised if he gets back in the football game. Lee comes in and goes to the shotgun. Throws right over the middle and a good strike. Yes. Nice pass. Got the tight end, Richard Dixon. 
And you like to see that for that young man who has struggled so much tonight. Well, he did a great job. He saw it real early, set his foot. He was in a wide open target right in the middle of the field. That's the best place for a young quarterback to see an open receiver right down the middle. And that's a big time first down for LSU and for Jarrett Lee. And I guarantee you, if they're asking Hatch, how many fingers am I holding up? He's saying Thursday. He got drilled. Lee too high. Had LaFell wide open. Let's go to Reese. How's Georgia doing, Reese? All right, thanks, Reese. And we will have the pleasure of seeing them next week at home in Athens. Lee on the run, almost caught, almost picked. Yeah. Cannot throw that pass late. Oh, dangerous. Jared Lee tried to uh, throw this one late to the sideline, and uh, this Auburn defense breaks on the ball too quickly. He holds it, he holds it, then he tries to throw late, and Walt McFadden, who had a tremendous interception last week at a critical point in the Mississippi State game, almost came up with his second one of the season. He had a better shot at it than Mitchell did, who was the intended receiver. And LSU's offense on third down, nothing over six yards. This is third and ten. Blitz. Good protection hit as he throws. Touchdown! Wow! Holy cow, he got it to Mitchell! What a job by Larry Jarrett Lee because he was bombed. He hung in there to the very last minute, and even when he threw it, I wasn't sure he'd get enough on that throw to get it there. It was a blitz, it was man coverage with no safety help, and Jared Lee put it in the exact right spot for his guy. And I'm not sure Andrew Hatch even understands what was going on there. He's still blinking on the sideline. The point after makes it 14 to 10. Jared Lee hanging in the pocket, coming through big time for his ball club. Aerial coverage of tonight's game provided to you by Goodyear. Football's rough, your commute shouldn't be, so get there on Goodyear's silent armor technology. What a ball game, exactly what we expected. Big plays, great hits. We talked about the LSU quarterbacks with no big throws in the first half. And Jarrett Lee with two huge throws in that drive. And that last one he made was a spectacular throw the way he was hit. Look at that, first eight drives, only 16 yards passing in a pick. That drive, 55. Oh, they got it. An onside kick. And wow. Jai Eugene comes up with it. What a call and what execution. You don't think there's a little riverboat gambler in Les Miles? Look at the celebration of the players. Look how excited the LSU players are. Not only in the execution of it, but the call by their coach. And how crushing is this for Auburn wow. to give up the touchdown and then bang, they do this. Auburn's kicking game has been solid all night but they got caught completely asleep on them perfectly kicked Jai Eugene there he's got blockers in front not only does he catch it he advances at 10 yards for more yardage that was a perfect play by LSU and it totally caught Auburn by surprise Jared Lee gets a block to keep the defense off of him completes for about three yards that's all. Richard Murphy makes the catch. Uh, Holly, what do you have? Well, guys, right now the LSU training staff says that Andrew Hatch has a minor concussion. He's out till further notice. I can tell you that they keep asking him all these questions, and the man asking him the questions kind of chuckles every once in a while. I don't know if that's because they're so outrageous or if he's being funny, but he does keep grabbing the side of his head. He's definitely got a pretty bad headache right now. I think he's chuckling because the answers may not match the questions. Murphy dragged down at the line of scrimmage. Let's go back to the last LSU touchdown and the throw by Andrew Hatch. Now there's going to be pressure coming here, and he's going to see Mitchell with single coverage and no safety help. 
So he knows he's got man, he knows pressure's coming, and he holds on to the last minute. Now watch how he makes this throw as he's getting hit in the back. This is just strength of arm, because he couldn't get his legs or his lower body into it. He flung it out there, and he came up with a touchdown. Not completely off his feet by the impact, and they were tending to him on the sidewalk. Going deep again, this one well overthrown, incomplete, intended for Boyd, or Bird rather, and Walter McFadden had the coverage. Have a wasted opportunity for LSU. Yeah. They make the call on the onside kick, they run it to perfection, and then it's a quick three and out. Credit really, the, uh, yeah. really deflating. Yeah. You know, you do that, you're so sky high, and then you can't make anything out of it. But tip your hat also to that sudden change of the Auburn defense coming right back on the field and getting a three and out. That's impressive. Dunn waits at his 14. Gotta give him room! Makes the fair catch back at the 12. Coming up, the taste of the town comes to the plains, and what's on the menu is going to surprise you. First thing I think about when they mention Yankee Stadium is Mickey Mantle playing center field and switch hitting. It's going to be tough to watch that place go. Less humble. And it looks like Auburn got it back. I was they just have fumbled <laughs> eight times yep. in the last two games, and that's a trend they did not want to see continue. That was the one thing that I thought here in the second half that Auburn was going to have to avoid. They got away with the interception in the first half. Brad Lester has the ball ripped out as he's fighting for extra yardage, and Tyrone Green smartly falls on the ball for Auburn. That could have been devastating for the home team. And LSU had the first couple of shots at it. Chris Todd has acquitted himself well there. You see, six fumbles lost out of eight in the last two weeks. And no matter what kind of offensive scheme you run, that doesn't work. Man wide open, the pass knocked away at the last minute. Well, he caught it. Holy cow, so how did that get through? Dunn made the catch. It looked like Curtis Taylor was going to be going the other way, but it's a gain of 29. It was kind of a trick and play. They faked the wide receiver screen, and everybody bit on it. And it was an outstanding play by Curtis Taylor to even get there to make a play on the ball because the rest of the coverage was totally fooled, and Dunn comes down with the catch. Curtis Taylor ran a long way from his free safety position to even make a play on it. Lester. Go back to that last play. It looked like a magic yeah. trick. He went right through the ball. He ran so hard to get there, and it wasn't his responsibility that he just couldn't come down with the interception. But uh, an excellent call by Tony Franklin. Fake the wide receiver screen. It fooled everybody and get the big one to Dunn. Holy cow. You wouldn't think there'd be this many big plays in a 14 to 10 game, but there have been. Four man rush, good protection. Lester in the flat. Little stutter step. Pick up a couple. From the LSU 41 yard line. Another good tackle by Kelvin Shepard. And Lester is yeah. slow to get up. Yeah, he was holding his right knee as he was trying to get off the ground. For Chris Todd now, uh, since his interception, seven for seven, throwing the football. Lester was hurt last week, he injured his neck, and had to be carted off the field. And boy, he takes this as a nasty spill. He comes right down and jams his head and neck. It's very, very frightening. They immobilized him, put a neck brace on, and took him off the field. And here he is being dragged down, and you can see the tension on that knee. I was impressed with Brad Lester that he came out and ran as hard as he did tonight. I was curious, you know, after a neck yeah. injury like that, how, how physical would he run the football early on? But uh, showed no signs of... Uh, 
have any uh, problem with that. Even on the first carry, he wasn't yeah. tentative at no, all. Not at all. Not one bit. He and Tate have split time at the running back spot tonight. And Lester not able to put any weight on that right knee. And you could see how it was bent under. It may have been hyperextended as he was fighting to stay up. So Tate will say hello to his teammate and check into the backfield. Right leg just got mm. pinned under the defender and uh, not able to get it out of there. Not supposed to go that way. In fact, he got it bent two different directions. And he doesn't want to put any weight on that at all. So it's highly doubtful that we would see Brad Lester the rest of this night. That means Ben Tate and possibly Tristan Davis, who yeah. is their third team table. They'll stand up and look to the sideline in this spread offense to get the play. A lot of times they're just trying to identify the front and the defense and then give them a play that's going to work against what they see. To the sideline incomplete. That was dangerously close yep. to being picked off again. And Chris Hawkins, the corner, had a great shot at it. Well, that was Chris Hawkins again. They went after him on a matchup like that to the corner earlier in the game and he came away with the interception. You know, they, they got away with that in the first quarter and a couple throws. But ever since then, LSU has kind of defended that post corner round a little bit better. I'd start picking on somebody else, yeah. wouldn't you? Second and 10. LSU comes with a run blitz. Tate. Good hard run down to the 34. <laughs> Little change up there. That's the first option that we've seen out of Auburn. We've seen a couple zone read runs by Chris Todd. That was a pure speed option. Come down the line and choose to either keep or pitch. And it was pretty well run by Chris Todd. Red zone alert for you for Georgia and Arizona State. Georgia driving again, and they are making, or Arizona State is driving. Georgia making a statement out in the desert. Todd. Not his strength, but he got within a yard, maybe, of a first down. It'll depend on the spot here. Very close. Looks like they might be a hair short from the way they spotted it. Well, from here, 49 50-yard field goal try. West Byron has already hit a 52-yarder this year versus Mississippi State a week ago. Or no, I take that, not against Mississippi State, but 52 yards is long for the season. Oh, almost a full yeah. yard, it appears. And again, remember, this offense has not done a whole lot under the center typical power football. They did score a touchdown in the first half by getting under the center and going power with Ben Tate. Tommy Tuberville is going to go for it. And they're going to get under the center on this one too, I think. Tristan Davis is in. He's on the wing. Tate is the deep man. Fourth and a yard. Play action. Top. Looking for Davis, then throws deeper downfield, and it's intercepted. LSU did a great job to make sure that wasn't going to work. And guess who? They tried to go after Hawkins again, and Hawkins was right there to make the intercept. This is outstanding defense by LSU. Number one, they get the pressure from Curtis Taylor. And they have everybody covered. I mean, you know, fourth and one, you're thinking run all the way, but they reacted so quickly and were on all the receivers and good coverage, and they got pressure on the quarterback. One safety gets the pressure, and Chris Hawkins, his second interception of the ball game. Hawkins, very athletic, very bright kid, and made another big play. Jarrett Lee is 
the quarterback. Scott pounds straight ahead, picks up 11 to the 22. Here's Reese Davis. How about that? How about break up the Commodores? Lee. What a catch. LaFell went high to pull it in from Jarrett Lee. Looked like it would be too far, but it's a gain of 33, and Lee only his fourth completion of the night. Well, they go first down, play action. They get great protection, and LaFell with an excellent route to the bench. The deep out route and a nice throw by Jarrett Lee. Play action after the good right Charles Scott. Get good protection. And then a strong throw by Jarrett Lee. Zach Etheridge, who was shaken up earlier, is back on the field. You're going to look at Hatch, who's up and walking around. Lee, good play fake. Right down the middle of Fell again to the 21. So Jarrett Lee, all at once, is perfectly oh, on man. target. And he doesn't look anything like he looked no. in the first half. I mean, he did not look like he had his feet on the ground in the first half. He looks great right now. Boys, he sets his feet, he's seeing the whole field, and he's stepping and firing. This is like what we saw at UCLA. You're right. Kevin Kraft, four interceptions in the first half of that game. Jared Lee with a costly interception in the first half of this game, and he looks outstanding right now. LSU driving half. Oh, my goodness. Pass. Man's oh, one oh, and touchdown. Keelan Williams of Demetrius Bird. The pass by Keelan Williams. Wow. Boy, you're right. What a call. What guts. LSU will do anything at any time, and you better get ready for it. Gary Croton, what a call that was. Keelan Williams didn't stop and set his feet either. He threw that one on the run and got it right over the defender's hand for the touchdown. The kick is good. That was the final play of the third quarter. And how about this? LSU goes 89 yards in a minute, 26, and takes the lead at Auburn. We are at Auburn, where LSU has just taken the lead, 17 to 14. LSU set to kick off. Demetrius Bird with the touchdown grab. Boy, what a game. What a play that was. Keelan Williams on the halfback pass, and it was a good one, too. It sure was. I don't think LSU will be trying an onside kick this time. Tristan Davis with great speed. Cut down as he got to the 25. Back to the touchdown. Yeah, well, when we go back, watch this now as it starts. It looks like the fake dive and the little toss sweep. Right to here. Now, Demetrius Bird is selling it. He looks like he's going to block this safety. But he's going to peel back to the corner, and Keelan Williams is going to throw this thing on the run. Bird sells it. Williams sells it and then makes a beautiful pass on the go right over the outstretched hands of Walter McFadden. That was a, that was a beautiful play and a great call by Gary Crook. Bird was the hero of last year's game, caught the winning touchdown pass with one second to go. And now it's up to Auburn to answer offensively. Complete out to the 34. Dunn ran a good pattern and was hit by Todd. Let's go to Holly. Good news if you're an Auburn fan. They did the ligament test on the knee of Brad Lester. Guys, he got the okay. He's standing on the sidelines with his helmet on. It looks like he can return to the game. That is a huge relief. He's the perfect relief guy to Ben Tate. A nice one-two punch. It looks like he's okay. Boy, that is wonderful news for them, Holly. Todd. Boy, that one didn't look good. Tate, that's supposed to be an option play, but when the quarterback is maybe a half a step ahead or a half step behind his running back, it's not going to work. Well, and your angle when you run that option, too, is you've got to kind of come downhill at that defensive end or the end man on the line. That time he kind of ran a little banana route, got too deep in the backfield, and it had to scramble to get back towards the line of scrimmage. Third and a yard. 
And LSU will bunch it up in the middle. Tate got a good hard run by Ben Tate, the 216 pounder. And that's a good job by that offensive line to give him some space. Coming into tonight's ball game, Ben Tate was averaging right around 93 yards per game. Not, not the flashiest back on the Auburn team, but the strongest, the most powerful, showed it right there. 38 yards tonight. LSU didn't get their oh, guy off the field. A late substitution. Perry Riley, number 56, was trying to get off the field. They ran that play with 12 guys on the field. Ken Wagers, our referee tonight. Illegal substitution against the defense. Penalties five yards. Down remain first. Les Miles pleading his case. Here's Perry Riley right now. They've got 12 guys on the field. He's trying to get off, but he's not sprinting off. And they're not able to get him off the field before the snap. So it's a first and five for Auburn. They're down by three. Four-man rush. Todd. Well overthrown out of bounds. See, this is where I think the LSU defense and the depth they have up front really starts to come into play. We're in the fourth quarter. It's a hot night. These teams have been banging on each other, slugging on each other. And the fact that LSU has the kind of depth that they have up front, they're going to have fresh defensive linemen. Now, the, the offensive line for Auburn hasn't substituted nearly as liberally as the LSU defense. Who wins in the trenches in these final 13 minutes? That'll be the, the story of the game. Tate can't get outside. Outstanding play by Harry Coleman, the strong safety, came up and cut Tate's legs out from under him. I'm really impressed physically with these uh, these safeties that oh, LSU yeah. has. I mean, they're all big. I mean, Coleman is 6'2", 205. Curtis Taylor, 6'3", 203. Chris Hawkins, the corner with two interceptions tonight, 6'1", 184. They are big physical defensive backs. McCray's 212. That's very rare in a safety to be that big and to be able to show that kind of athleticism. Big play here, third and four. Unless you're trying to keep this drive going. Tate in the flat, and Tate was trying to make a move before he had the catch because he could see Harry Riley coming. If he doesn't make that move, he makes the catch, but Riley gets him. So he's trying to get the first down. Good pressure. Force Chris Todd to come off of his downfield receiver and go to his dump off. But you're right, even if he makes that catch, it's short of the first down. That's Chad Jones. He's waiting back at the 20. The 12 15 to go in this game in a three point LSU lead. Auburn has to give it up. Not a good kick, but they'll get the bounce. Forty-nine yards with the roll. When we come back, hey, a taste of the town is on its way. Twelve oh five left in a great battle between LSU and Auburn. LSU on top by three, but they're pinned back inside their ten. First down. Breaks a tackle. Driving through more tacklers out across the 20. Guy is a 300-pounder in waiting, I'm telling you. <laughs> You're going to wake up one morning. And LSU out near the 50-yard line. They're up three and driving, trying to burn some clock. Now, I am not familiar with fried green tomato <laughs> po'boys. Yeah. 
What, what kind of meat's in it? No meat. Fried green tomatoes, some grilled onions, some lettuce, and a special sauce, and it was outstanding. What's the point? <laughs> if there's no meat, yeah. what's the point? Uh, it was good, and the gumbo was great. His gumbo's become a big seller with Auburn tailgaters, too. It's a neat little place. Scott, nice cut. Oh, my goodness. Scott down to the 21-yard line. Zach Etheridge had to make a saving tackle. That's a gain of 30, and Scott starting to impose his will. 117 yards for the guy who came in averaging 131. Yeah, look at the block by Quinn Johnson, number 45, the fullback. Doesn't get many carries, but sticks his nose in there, and Charles Scott is wearing him down. Not only Charles Scott, but the offensive line, this big physical experienced group, pounding on the Auburn defense on this drive. And that Auburn defense has to at least hold to a field goal. They cannot afford to give up a touchdown. Scott again. Blackman had him around the waist and drags him back. Great penetration by Senderic Marks. That, that's what stopped that play. He got into the backfield and forced Charles Scott to stop his feet and change course. And it was stopped for a short game. Send Derek Marks a player. Oh, man, he is. He's a player. Nine thirty-six and counting in this game. LSU. See, this is just a matter of wills right now in the trenches. This game will be won or lost in the trenches in this last part of the fourth quarter. Who it, moves who? This veteran offensive line. Pass too wide for LaFell. Take a look at the menu that we've had so far for Taste of the Town and be sure to check out all of the Taste of the Towns at ESPN.com. Search Taste of the Town. Little Cajun trio. Good little spot. Didn't know about it until I got here this time. Next week, I'm betting on some kind of barbecue, Jordan. <laughs> I got a couple ideas for Athens. I've been there a few times. Yes, you yeah. have. Alabama and Georgia, why don't we wear red? We can't get in yeah, trouble. That's right. Third and ten. We got a call timeout. Play clock was down to one. 9-19 to go in this ball game. A huge third down coming when we come back. Yes, it's September, but this is a game with great meaning. Number six against number ten. Glad you could join us from Auburn. Six of the late last eight years, the team that has won this game, they've all been close, has gone on to win the SEC West and play for the Southeastern Conference Championship. Screen to Scott. Breaks a tackle down to the 15. They need to get inside the 12 for a first down. So what do you do? Do you kick the field goal? Yeah, I, I think you kick the field goal. You want as many points as you can get in a game like this, I think. Well, well, guess it? who's calling the plays? I know. And you know, it's, it's interesting. Ever since Les Miles came to LSU, they have been the best team on fourth down in college football. And the second best team has been Auburn in that same time period. LSU's converted 76% on fourth down under Les Miles, but he goes with the smart call here, I think, on fourth and three to go for three more points. This is from 32 yards. David has hit from 46, missed from 50. This one sneaks through yeah. the right upright. Colt David is two for three, and LSU has a six-point lead with 8.27 to go from Auburn, Alabama. Let's take a look at the ESPNU All-State Standings Review for this week. USC and Oklahoma were both idle, as was number eight, Wisconsin. Georgia leading Arizona State, trying to hold on to that third spot. Big win for Florida over Tennessee. Missouri remains undefeated. LSU here in the battle with Auburn. Both of these teams unbeaten. And Alabama made a real statement at Arkansas. They just ran the hogs out of there. And how about five SEC schools in the top ten? Unprecedented. No conference has ever done that in the history of the AP poll. Unprecedented does mean they never did it, right? I think so. Yes. Yeah. First time? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I'm just messing with it. <laughs> Davis. 
Ball's taken away. Davis may have gotten it back if it is dual possession. He'll get to keep it. It was ripped out of there by R.J. Jackson. And Davis alertly got his hands back around him. That would have been a killer. Look at the LSU players on the field. They're encouraging. There's a very small section of LSU fans here in Jordan-Hare Stadium, and they're waving their arms at those guys to say, hey, let's, let's pick up the noise here. We're on the road, but let's see some of that value Bengal spirit and help us out here. I don't think a few hundred people are going to make yeah. it dead. Oh. It's up to Chris Todd. Dangerous, dangerous path. Throws that intended for Smith. Too high. Let's check in with Reese. The all-time wins lead. Congratulations, coach. Caught in the run. Back to a wide open receiver. Hawthorne, the tight end. Somebody forgot about him. Well, this was just an adjustment by Hawthorne. This wasn't the called route because it was a rollout left for the quarterback, Chris Todd. But when Hawthorne looked back and saw his quarterback scrambling, he adjusted the route. See, Todd's looking left all the way, but when he scrambled, Hawthorne released outside for him, and nobody went with him from the LSU defense. A nice adjustment by Hawthorne, but he did it on his own when he saw his quarterback. Tate. Down to the 15 and turn back. And Todd, you know what a scary throw that's got to be. Guys, wide yeah. open. You don't want to overthrow him. You don't want to underthrow him. Right at him. You're just trying to aim it, yeah. right? When you have a guy wide open, the best thing to do is throw it right at him. Don't try to lead him. Don't try to make it perfect. Throw it right at him. Chris Todd has had a pretty good ball game. Tate again, we haven't seen Lester since he was hurt, and the crowd did not like that play call. Ricky Jean-Francois and Kirsten Pittman on the tackle. Well, another big play here. Auburn in field goal range. Down six points. Got to be smart if you're Chris Todd here. Don't lose a scoring opportunity if the play's not there. He's had two picked off tonight, 14 out of 26, 210 yards on the evening. Well, she was kind of lucky that they went to the freeze count and changed the play because if they would have gone on a quick count, LSU was not ready. They had guys b mumbling around there. They would have got caught. But as it turns out, Auburn had to call a timeout because the play clock had run down. And we're now down to 6 minutes and 48 seconds. See, the way this offense works is they, they don't huddle, so they come right up the line of the scrimmage, and you don't know if they're going on a quick count or if they're going to start into the cadence and then back off and look to the sideline for a change of play. If they would have gone with a quick count there, they might have caught LSU because they were not in position to make a play. But they, they pulled off and then had to call a timeout. Holly, what do you have? Well, guys, you should have seen Tyson Jackson of LSU and Michael Goggins. They were booking it off the field. They were in a full-on sprint like they were timing for the NFL, trying to get off the field before that ball was snapped. In fact, Michael Goggins wiped out on the sideline after he got there. He slid like he was sliding into home plate. Bad for Ryan Pugh, though, the Auburn center. Why didn't he snap the ball when he saw those guys trying to hightail it? Good question. Well, it's a shotgun, and you sure don't want an errant shotgun snap if Good your answer. quarterback's not ready. Yeah, that's a little different just go if the center's got his by. hands. Yeah, if the center's got his hands under there, he's been a little bit more alert for the ball. Now, if they don't make it here, what do you do? This is third and nine. Is this four down territory? No, I, I, you kick the football. I mean, you've got statistically the best defense in the SEC. You count on them one more time to get you the ball back. You need points. Todd rolls away from pressure, throws for the end zone. Man. This is why they changed the offense at Auburn. So people could not play them for the run all the time and shut down their offense. And they got the perfect matchup. Their best quick 
receiver in space, Robert Dunn, against a backup safety, Danny McRae. It wasn't against the corner, it was against the safety, and it was a big win for Robert Dunn. Dunn, four catches, 60 yards, all this half, and Chris Todd has tied it up and given his team the chance to take the lead, and they just got it. 74 yards in only a minute, 47. A seesaw battle, and Auburn is back on top. Six minutes and 40 seconds left in a beauty. Auburn, number 10, by a point over number 6, LSU. Holiday and Keelan Williams are deep. That drive took only a minute, 47. When I talked to Tommy Tuberville on the field before the game, he said, I don't know if we can score enough points to get these guys. He said, I think our defense will play well. I don't know if we can score enough points. I think if I'd have told him before the game that you're going to have 21, he'd have felt pretty good about his chances. He'd have done a backflip. And right now, they have enough points. But LSU's got 640 left. Keelan Williams from the nine. Again, good kick coverage. Let's go back to this touchdown and see the matchup here. This is Robert Dunn. He's their best guy in space. This is a safety, not a corner. That's Danny McRae. Watch the shake move that Robert Dunn puts on right here. Boom, boom. Plants the left foot, gets inside and turns McRae completely around. And a perfect throw by Chris Todd. And after the move, it's just speed. Woo! Dunn's got it. McRae doesn't. LSU and Jarrett Lee, their last four drives, 241 yards and 17 points. They got to do it again. Scott gets the carry on first down, and it's going to be Jarrett Lee the rest of the way because Andrew Hatch is sitting there over on the LSU bench with his helmet off and looking like for all the world he has no idea what's going on. He has not been up and around his teammates since suffering that concussion. Holly? Well, guys, I know he's not drunk because Hatch is a Mormon and he doesn't drink, but you would think he's tipsy the way he's been wobbling around. They won't give him his helmet back. He is still out of it. All right, thanks, Holly. Hopefully in the long term, that young man's going to be fine. Play action fake to Scott. And overthrow. Intended for Demetrius Bird. Well, he's got a big third down coming up, but Jarrett Lee, two different quarterbacks, first half to second half. Right at the end of the first half, just such an ill-advised tentative throw that was picked off by Gabe McKenzie. Gave Auburn a touchdown, but in the second half, particularly after the injury to Hatch, he's been a new quarterback. Has stayed in the pocket, he's made strong throws, good decisions, and he's brought his team back in this football game. But he's got to be called on one more time right now on a third down and 11 yards. This may not be the last possession that LSU has, but they're not going to have many more. And Demetrius Bird looks like it might be cramps in his left calf. One of his key receivers along with Brandon LaFell. LSU only with one timeout left which could factor in here. Bird, three catches, 38 yards, and a touchdown. And you can tell that's what it is, a cramp. So he'll have to come out. And uh, now if you're Jared Lee, a redshirt freshman quarterback out of Brenham, Texas, you've got to be smart with the football here. If you have to punt and count on your defense one more time, that's okay. Do not force a throw in here and give Auburn a turnover and a chance to seal this game in your end of the field. If it's there, take it. If it's not, don't make a mistake. LaFell is the inside receiver. Instead, they go the other way. Incomplete intended for Chris Mitchell, but the ball was well underthrown as Mitchell made the cut to the outside. 
Yeah, that one didn't look too good. I'm not sure no. if he was expecting Mitchell to break out sooner or what. Well, they missed by about five yards. So LSU, with only one timeout left, will have to kick it away. And remember, with the new clock rules, it is harder to come from behind because the time passes a lot more quickly. Dunn is the deep man. Late fair catch signal makes it inside the 25. The punt of 43 yards. Get your and Sports Center at 7 p.m. tomorrow on ESPN. Now this second half, this Auburn offensive line is hung in there. Ryan Pugh, the center. Byron Ice and Tyrone Green, the guards. Tate has been in there since Lester was shaken up, and Lester hasn't been able to come back in the ball game. Pittman and Shepard made the tackle. Holly? Well, after that last touchdown drive, the Auburn offensive line coach, Hugh Nall, came over, and he touched, like a proud father, both sides of every single lineman's face, kind of giving them a little kudo. He said, we've got to keep fighting. When we get the ball back, we have to be monsters out there. These are a very young group still, but he said, I've never had so much fun coaching. Yeah, the last two years, he has loved coaching this offensive line. Last year, he had three freshmen starting at one point. Overthrown out of bounds. And the good thing for LSU, not only do they bring up third and ten, but they get the clock stopped with 4.56 left. So uh, a chance for a three and out and get the ball back to Jarrett Lee in the offense. Well, do you question the play selection of the pass? And do you question the fact that they snapped the ball with ten seconds to go on the play clock? Well, you know what? Here's the thing. Your offense is built on playing up-tempo and getting as many snaps as you can. So now you tell them, okay, we're going to milk the clock. You don't want to take them completely out of their rhythm. And I don't disagree with throwing because you can't be too conservative here. You've got right. to make a couple first downs. You can't just go out there and run three plays into the line of scrimmage. And they're only up one, so a field goal would beat them. Tate. Trying to get to the outside, cuts back, takes it up to the 28-yard line. It'll be well shy of a first down. So this is going to leave a lot of time on the clock for LSU. Now, now here's a time where you tell Auburn you use every bit of this play clock. The clock is running. You're going under four minutes and 30 seconds. You don't snap this ball until you're right down around two seconds on the play clock. Shoemaker, who had a uh, bad punt his last time, will kick to Jones. He is the sure-handed guy back there, although he has averaged 13 yards of return this year. And this should be very good field position for LSU. Poor kick. Hit an Auburn player. Going to be right there. Outside the 40-yard line. Another very short kick. And Tommy Tuberville, all he can do is shake his head. It looked like it hit Gerard Powers. Last year in the game in Baton Rouge, he made what he said was a mistake when he squib kicked late in the game and gave LSU good field position to start their game-winning drive. This time, this was not a choice to kick short. It was just a poorly executed punt. And once again, LSU, with four minutes left in the ball game, starts with excellent field position. Boy, you're telling me, look where they start at the 45. They don't have to go that far yeah. to set up a field goal that could win. Hope David's career-long field goal is 49 yards. Keelan Williams is the back beside Jared Lee. And a slow developing handoff. He picks up seven. Boy, the timing was messed up on that, and it still worked. It was a little bit of a delay draw. We haven't seen a lot of Keelan Williams. It's been a steady dose right. of Charles Scott, but that was a pretty good little run on first down by Keelan Williams. Here comes Charles Scott back in the game now. I'd want him in there, too. Yeah. Guy's been a beast. Coach to Scott. 
throw to the outside, and that's complete to Jared Mitchell. And Mitchell has the first down. Well, Mike McNeil makes the tackle. What a great block out there by Brandon LaFell, too. And he's their leading receiver coming in, number one, but he did a great job of blocking on the perimeter. When you run wide receiver screens, your other guys have to block. Watch Brandon LaFell right here. Just get into his guy and not let him go. He's blocking on Walter McFadden. Will not let him go till he drives him out of the sideline. Terrence Tolliver with a good block as well. They go to Mitchell on the other side. Same play. And same guy blocking. Brandon yep. LaFell leading the blocking. <laughs> and they have already reached the area where Colt David can knock it through. And I like the tempo right now that LSU is playing yep. with. They're not hurrying. Right. They're taking their time very calmly trying to get in position. You have one timeout left if you're LSU. Auburn has all three of theirs. And they're going to have to start using yeah. them. Maybe when you get inside of two minutes, they might have to yeah. start thinking that way. Scott. And they're going to try to wedge out some yardage here. Scott down to the 29 for a first down. The closer they get for Cole David, obviously the easier the kick is going to be. But this kid is a clutch kicker. Clock running. LSU has two goals here to score and work the clock down as far as they can at the same time. Scott had to reposition him. Lee throws to Scott, and he got him down to the 20-yard line. Holy cow. Yeah, I'm glad he repositioned it. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great job by Jared Lee. Yeah. It's going to come up a, a hair short of the first down, but they are right in the middle of the field. They're in perfect position. Jared Lee, he knows he's going to Charles Scott. There's pressure from Antonio Coleman. Oh. And Lee hangs right in there and makes another throw under pressure. Well, he's going to be first in line for the hot tub. Here's a play of the game right here now. Watch him run right behind fullback Quinn Johnson. Nope, well, give it to Quinn. You know, he scored on a five-yard touchdown run last week. It was his first touchdown. They threw him a bone, you know. I mean, he gets in there and he blocks all the time. He doesn't carry very much. That's only his third attempt rushing this season and he gets the first down easily. Well, this wasn't even a bone. This was a chicken wing, but at <laughs> least he made the most of it. He sure did. And the clock is still running. And there is Andrew Hatch watching from the sideline after he was knocked out of this game. LSU, it looks, playing for the field goal, although Lee is going to go back to throw here. Dangerous pass. Got it out to LaFell. Touchdown. Is this, a, this is deja vu. Last year, they needed a field goal to win. Less miles. And they threw to the end zone with nine seconds left. A lot more time and eternity and less miles up in this style of play. To a minute to defend, left. isn't he? Oh, my goodness. And now it looks like they will come out and go for two. Yeah, try to get up by seven. Make it a seven-point lead. Now, that pass looked like it was what, half an arm's length away from yeah. being picked? Yeah, but they got the matchup that they wanted. Yeah. Just like we saw Auburn's touchdown, they got their leading receiver, Brandon LaFell, working against the safety, Zach Etheridge, not a corner, and they turned it into a touchdown. What a game. Lee on a roll, throws to the corner of the end zone, incomplete. Off the fingertips of Richard Murphy. Well, the, the good news for LSU is that Auburn still needs a touchdown. A field goal can't beat him or tie it. Here's LaFell, and he's working on, sat, on, on Etheridge, who's a safety on the out route. It's a quick throw. He's got two backs in the backfield for good protection. And Jarrett Lee puts it outside, and LaFell takes it to the end zone. That was a better throw than I thought yeah. it was on the replay. I wasn't close to being picked. No, low and outside. It was a wide receiver working against the safety, and the matchup favored LSU. I, I just, you know, we're, we're a month into the season, and I have seen two turnarounds by quarterbacks from one half to the second. The, the opener, Kevin Kraft at UCLA, and now Jarrett Lee in this ball game. Very, very impressive.
I'll tell you what, in that first half at UCLA, Kevin Kraft couldn't have hit the inside of a barn if he was standing inside the barn. <laughs> it was terrible, and then he came back and looked like an all-pro in the second half. Before tonight, the last three games that LSU has played here at Auburn, they scored a total, a total of 19 points. Tonight, they've got 26 right now. And these are two teams. LSU was giving up eight points a game. Auburn was giving up five points a game. Tate on the pooch kick. Takes it out across the 35. Now, if you're Auburn, you've got three timeouts left and 58 seconds to go. That's a lot of time. Yeah. But you need the touchdown. Field goal doesn't yeah, do you any right. good. Unbelievable. What Chris game. Todd was going to split time tonight with Cody Burns, but Chris Todd has been too good to come out of this ball game. 15 out of 28 for 225 yards. He does have two picks, but he also has the touchdown. And they're on their feet here at Auburn. Four-man rush. Out in the flat to Tate. And Tate will be dragged out of bounds to the 38-yard line. Contrera, the middle linebacker, good job. But there's a flag down. Yeah. And it's back where the quarterback was. It's roughing the passer. Holy cow. What a huge mistake. It's a four-man rush. They're trying to play zone coverage. Oh, what a shot. Raheem Alim. Yep. Got him in the small of the back and nearly took Jason Bosley with him as well. Trying to rotate a lot of guys in there, keep guys fresh. Alim has not been in the game too much tonight. A little over aggressive on that one. And now, excellent field position for Chris Todd for an enormous penalty. Three timeouts, 51 seconds left. Here Alim comes Alim coming. Again. Wow. This time. He made up for it. What a burst. 254 pounds. He's a speed Woo. Boy, did he make up for that mistake. And he beat Auburn's best offensive lineman, Lee Zimba, the left tackle, hardly got out of his stance. Yeah. Alim looked like a sprinter. Look at this. Right off, I mean, Zimba was looking inside for some reason to help inside, and by the time he turned his eyes outside, Alim was already by him. Look, a late read by Zimba, and Alim right to the quarterback. Alim picks up a penalty for 15 yards and gets it right back oh, on the man. sack, and it's huge. This game has so much importance, even in September. Number six against number 10. Six of the last eight years. The team that has won this has gone on to win the SEC West and play for the title. And look at that record for LSU. Five straight games against top 10 teams. What a remarkable record. Coming up next on ESPN, stay tuned for SportsCenter. Who's the best team in the SEC? That's up for grabs. There's five of them in the top ten for the first time ever. The U.S. ahead in the Ryder Cup and the Rays make history. Second and a half mile. See, again, this is where you count on your defensive line depth because right now they're saying, since we can afford to give up a field goal, and we can give up some yardage. We just want to keep him out of the end zone. We're going to play coverage. We're not going to blitz Chris Todd right now. We're going to rush four and know that we've got fresh defensive linemen throughout this game to put some pressure on him with four so we can drop seven into coverage and, that's and what play pass doing. defense. And it's tough to get all this yardage back in one chunk. Yeah. They're going to have two shots. Right. they got to go two downs here. They still have two timeouts, too. they got to get a completion here, though, for about half the yardage anyway. Todd down the middle, had a man open and missed him. Dunn was open on a post, and the pass was overthrown. But the pressure, again, a four-man rush, and they get to him. Yeah. 
And they're subbing defensive linemen again. I mean, this, this, the depth of their defensive line has come through in the fourth quarter for them. That's remarkable, isn't yeah. it? This is a conference full of great linemen. But to have as many as LSU does is almost unfair. Yeah. I mean, and Auburn's not too far behind. I mean, they've, no. got, they've got seven or eight guys that they roll through on their defensive line as well. But, uh, but LSU, it, it really started with Nick Saban. When he was there and the guys he was recruiting on the defensive line, they put a bunch of guys in the league over the last several years, and they have continued to recruit outstanding defensive linemen. Here's the game for Auburn, fourth and 25. They've got to make it or it's over. Four-man rush. Todd running for his life. He's got to get rid of it. Throws on the run, and it's complete down to the 40-yard line. Sure. Rodriguez Smith makes the catch, but he's going to be about a yard shy of a first down. Tommy Tuberville and the Auburn coaches were thinking there should have been a roughing the pass on that penalty. I don't agree. I don't think so. They were in pursuing Chris Todd. They were chasing him to the sideline, and I think it was a simultaneous hit as the ball's gone. The ball's gone. He's hit by Kirsten Pittman. I don't think that was a late hit. It was complete, but it was short of the first down. No, that's not a late hit. You're still playing football. Yep. I mean, less than a half a step, you can't call that a late hit. But what a play by Todd to keep the thing alive and make that throw and get 23 yep. of the 25 yards. It was a remarkable effort on his part. He was also close to a hit out of bounds as he was right at the sideline. But I think it's a great no call by the officials. Tommy Tuberville electing not even to use those two timeouts. You can't stop the clock anymore, but conceding this one to LSU. Well, we thought it would be a fist fight in the ditch, and it was. Absolutely. And enough big plays to, to, to put some points on the board. The first half, the LSU quarterbacks, no big plays. The second half, Jarrett Lee made some big plays. Chris Todd made some big plays. We had a big unknown about the quarterbacks in this game, and I thought both Jarrett Lee and Chris Todd stepped up and made plays today. Well, they sure did, and LSU wins it. What a tremendous effort by both ball clubs. Let's go to Holly. Coach, your first performance on the road this season. What did you learn about your team? Well, you know what? We figured that we might come back in that second half and play. And I know that we knew that our opponent did not know how well we threw the football. And, uh, you know, just another day in the SEC, come from behind, fight like hell. But how do you describe the growth of your quarterback, Jarrett Lee, when he had to come back in and overcome the interception and have to play? Well, it's, you know, we knew that. I mean, we, we had comfort with his ability. We just needed to get his feet on the ground, let him make some plays, get comfortable. And he did that today, certainly. We'll look forward to putting him in the game later. Tell us about that defensive line, Coach. It seemed like a huge key for you tonight. What was their key? Well, our defensive line is awfully good. I mean, they come to the line of scrimmage. They take the line of scrimmage as best they can. And tonight they did that. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Holly. Thank you, Holly. The final score again, LSU beats Auburn 26 to 21. What a game. Coming up next on ESPN, stay tuned for SportsCenter. And for a wrap-up of this game, you can catch us on ESPN News in just a few minutes. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Todd Blackledge, Holly Rowe, and our entire ESPN crew, this is Mike Patrick. Thanks for watching, everybody, and good night from Auburn. We're in Auburn, Alabama. This is deja vu. This is like being in Baton Rouge or maybe down in New Orleans at the BCS championship game because the purple and gold have taken over as Coach Les Miles and LSU done what hadn't been done in nine meetings here. The road team winning. Les, what a story of redemption for your quarterback because Jarrett Lee throws about as bad an interception as you could possibly throw in the first half, gives him seven points, yet comes back and throws two touchdown passes in the second half, including the game winner. Did you think he could do that? Yeah, yeah, we did. We, we knew that he could throw the football. He had to get comfortable, get his feet on the ground, and, and we told him after he threw the first one, you know what? It happens when you throw the football. Just, you know, you're going to have to come back out here in the second half and, you know, redeem yourself, and certainly that's what he did. That's a great win in a hostile environment, Coach.
The key thing I thought is the offensive staff, maybe Gary Croton and the staff, made some wonderful adjustments at halftime and really mixed up with Scott Lee, Scott Wood. They kept them off balance. The option pass touched a really good play caller. I agree. The, uh, it, it, as you know, balance is the issue. Yeah. If, you can, if you can keep the run and the pass working at all points and times, it's... Uh, you know, we're a pretty physical front, and uh, it'll be hard for them to, to adjust. Good call. Coach, congratulations on a fantastic victory. What did you see in the Auburn defense that allowed you to run the ball so effectively this, this evening? Well, we have a really big, strong offensive line and, uh, and a good fullback, and, you know, we were in two back a, a good portion that time, and uh, we think we can run the football against anybody. And, uh, you know, we, it, it became extremely hard for them to defend us when we opened up the pass because then the rush became so much harder to defend, so. Yeah, Charles Scott, 21 carries, 132 yards. When you do those kind of numbers in this kind of series, you've you played like a man. You could have kicked a field goal and taken the lead, but just like last year, you guys were thinking touchdown on that final drive, not just taking the lead. Yeah, we're, we're going to play football to the end, and, it's, uh, and for us, and I keep saying it, and we believe it, it's balance. And so, you know, we go under center, they're going to have to defend the pass, because if they don't, we're going to throw it. And, Obviously, you know, to me, that's what allows us to, to make a play. Brandon LaFell makes a great play on a ball, that, you know, that we re routinely call and, and complete. So. One of the little secrets of the ball game was your punter. I thought he really gave you a good field position where theirs gave you the chance to win the football game. I agree with you. We, we, we had him pinned in pretty good. And Brady Dalfrey, you know, we know has a tremendous leg. And really, you know, he's one of those guys that's a key piece to the puzzle. You know, he's really pursued excellence, had a great week in preparation. And we watched him in pregame, and boy, he said, you know, you could just tell he was going to have a big night. And, you know, if he continues to do that, field position will be something we'll enjoy all year long. Absolutely. And it's a big night for the Bayou Bengals. A lot of football to be played. You got some tough games ahead. Florida, Georgia, Alabama, but LSU. Takes the early lead in the SEC West by conquering the Auburn Tigers here on the plane tonight with a late touchdown pass. Les, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Yes, thank you. Thanks, Lee. Big Des.